So a lot of people, they'll know that they're not hungry, they'll instinctively know they're not hungry, and yet they'll have this insatiable urge for cravings, for eating something like an ice cream or something like that. And the understanding is that that urge is actually driven by the chemistry within the brain. It's not a need for nutrients. It's a, it's a need for a warm hug from food. I just want to go back to the, the Sydney uh, Diet Heart Study because what they uh, promoted from that study was that the, uh, the polyunsaturated fats, the seed oils, were actually healthier than the saturated, which was exact opposite to what the results showed. So tell us a little bit about that and because there are a number of other stu similar studies as well, the Minnesota study as well, that they promoted uh, or basically they lied about the, uh, about the results. Is that it was a cover-up. It was an out-and-out -out cover up. So as I said, the study was finished in 1973, and yet the data on mortality was not published until 2014. And that was actually uncovered by a researcher by the name of Dr. Christopher Ramsden, who actually found it in the basement of one of the deceased lead investigators. And they had to go and retall it out. It was on magnetic tapes and data sets and punch cards. I kid you not. And they had to go and get the, they had to go to a computer laboratory who was able to get some ancient computer equipment so they could decode it. And then they had to validate it against the known um, population data to make sure it was reliable. But they were able to validate the data to a sufficient level where it was able to be published in the British Medical Journal, one of the world's leading and most prestigious journals. The curious thing here is, and I'll just leave you with a thought bubble, so given that this study predated the food pyramid, the implementation of the food pyramid, if that data had not been covered up, would we have ever been subjected to the food pyramid? As you say, it's not an isolated finding. We've just talked about one, but the mm. Women's Health Initiative, the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, they're are two other large-scale randomised controlled trials. And when we're talking about the hierarchy of medical evidence, understand that this study design is at the very top. So a lot of these uh, food pyramid advocates will cite what we call epidemiological or, um, research, uh, which is way down the bottom, while ignoring the best quality experimental research we have. It's a complete non sequitur. Nicole, from a from a food point of view, I mean, where do we find them, and and how do we, you know, how do we reduce our reliance, I guess, on uh, on these uh, on these seed oils? Yeah, well, um, I guess as uh, Paul was talking about as well, is that you know, if we're eating unprocessed and real food, then I guess that's the best way to avoid that whole bucket of seed oil, um, you know, seed oil issue. Um, as I talk to a lot of my clients, the first thing we sort of run down is, you know, understanding how to avoid sugar and, and how to reduce total carbohydrate intake um, in their diet. And I go through label reading with them so that they can navigate, you know, you know, what's a, a low carb, you know, no added sugar product. Um, once we've done that, then we really have to start navigating the whole um, seed vegetable oil um, issue. Um, which is really about um, them checking their ingredients um, ingredients lists really carefully. Um, again, if we're going down the unprocessed pathway and we're eating, you know, good quality protein like meat, chicken, fish, eggs, um, these don't really have ingredients lists. So, you know, I always say if it doesn't really have an ingredients list, um, then you're you're eating real food. 